name is Jan, I'm a fitness and nutrition coach with my own company, Benefits Personal Training. And today, I'm gonna to take you through a full body stretching routine. You can follow along with me as I go. Flexibility is something that I think is quite neglected in our own health and wellness. You know, sometimes we get the workouts in, we get the cardio in, we focus on our nutrition, but we forget about the flexibility and mobility. You know, flexibility is our joint's ability to move smoothly and without pain through its intended range of motion. And for many of us, whether through redundant movement or doing similar movement patterns throughout the day, we often get quite tight and our muscles begin to compensate. Stretching, it allows us to elongate some of those muscles and to stretch them out so that they don't feel so tight. Today, as we go along, I encourage you to just take it slow, go with where you're at, and do the best that you can. The more you, the more you kind of practice this and contribute time to this, the better you're going to feel. So I encourage you, do this routine today, but then come back to it another time this week. I'm excited to see the benefits that happen for you. Um, with this stretching routine and I hope truly that you'll, you'll feel the changes that, that happen with it. Um, but for now, let's jump in um, and get started. Now, prior to, go, prior to digging in, I just want you to grab one thing before we get started and that's a pillow. Um, if you have a mat, that's great, but for whatever reason, if it's not enough cushion, you may want a pillow or something soft that you can you know, put your knees on and such as we go along. So you might just want to grab that prior to starting. But the first stretch that we're gonna start with is a neck stretch. So we're gonna kind of work our way from top to bottom here. So with shoulders nice and relaxed, feet shoulder width apart, you're gonna gently move your head to one side. Okay, right away this may already feel tight. So just go slow, especially when it comes to your neck. Okay, you can change the angle a little bit, so looking up or looking down, anywhere that feels the tightest, I just want you to hold there. And if you find that you can have a little bit more of a stretch, you can push your hand on the top to apply a little bit more pressure. I'm going to breathe as you do this. This is now your time to unwind. Great time to do your stretching during your cool down when your muscles are already warm. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to come out of that nice and gently. And you're going to go ahead and switch to the other side. slightly okay and then the next stretch we're going to do is a shoulder stretch so you're just going to bring one arm across now there are tons of stretches you can do there are ton, tons of different ways to go about flexibility training but today i'm just showing you a good routine it's one of my favorites it kind of covers everything and it should help your body already feel better by the time you're finished it. So yes, there are always more options out there. You can expand this routine. Um, you can take bits and pieces of it, whatever works best for you. Right now you should be feeling this kind of across the front of the shoulder. When you're ready, you can go ahead and switch sides. Really try not to seize up. Relax those shoulders, draw them down. Good. You can shake that up. Okay, then we're going to bring arms up overhead. We're going to cross one arm and pull it down. You should be feeling this at the back of the arm now into the triceps. Generally, when we're stretching, we want to give at least 30 seconds um, for each stretch. And what that does is it allows our body to kind of realize that it is okay to relax, that it doesn't need to be jumping in to contract or do a movement. And so that's why it's really important not to kind of jump around with stretching, but to really take a nice slow approach so that our body, um, from uh, a physiology perspective, so you know all the science behind it, can actually really start to re relax um, and allow your muscles to kind of trust you with this process and elongate um, as it does so. Good, that feels like a nice one. Switch sides. Our muscles are always, they're always ready to work for us, right? Everything we do, every time we move, it involves a muscle. And so, if we don't slow down, if we don't give our muscles permission to just relax a bit and to stretch out, they're constantly gonna be ready to act. 
So that's why we need to take some time with stretching. You know, 10 seconds isn't enough time for our bodies to realize that, hey, we're stretching now, we're relaxing. So that's why we need to give it some time. Good, that should feel really nice. Relax that out, okay? Now the next stretch we're gonna do, um, we're actually gonna use a wall, and you can use, feel free to use a door frame here, um, a corner, whatever. But what we're gonna do is a chest stretch. And what it's gonna involve, is you're gonna take your arm to 90 degrees, you're gonna put it against the ledge. I have a little bit of a ledge here, so I can show it that way, but I'll just do it against the wall. You might wanna stagger your stance a little bit. Arm comes behind, and you're opening up through that chest. So really, you should be feeling this stretch running through the chest, and into the bicep, okay? So you step a little bit forward, take a bit of that weight forward. You don't wanna to go too far. Remember, we're listening to our bodies here. Opening up that chest. This is a muscle that always gets for tighter people, especially those that work at a desk job. So this is a great stretch for better posture, for decreasing um, back pain and neck pain. If you've had any kind of physio for your shoulders or your neck, it's probably quite likely you've done this stretch or you've been shown it. When you're ready, you can go ahead and switch sides. Remember to breathe. Good. And if you ever want to get a little bit more into the shoulder, so you're obviously feeling it in your chest now, a little bit more into your shoulder, you can always lift a little bit higher. You should feel that in a slightly deeper spot. Good. Now come out of that. And the next one we are going to do actually will involve a little bit of a movement. So for most of today, we're using you know really static stretches where you're not moving a ton. But this one we will move a little bit. And I'm sure it's one that most of you are familiar with. But you're gonna come down to four point kneeling. Wrists are going to be in line with shoulders, knees in line with hips, and toes can be up or down, whichever you prefer. Keeping your head nice and neutral though, we are going to draw in that rib cage, lift it nice and high, and we are going to move into what is called in most traditionally yoga practices, um, cat and cow. So we're tucking that chin in, we're squeezing our rib cage in, we're pulling that belly button up, and remembering to breathe. And then we're going to slowly lower the rib cage, slowly release the pelvis, and look up. And when you're ready, we're going to do that again. So lifting through the rib cage, core nice and tight, drawing upwards as far as you can go. You might even encourage a little bit of movement here, whatever feels good. And then slowly moving in to our cow. Let's do it one more time. Drawing into that cat position. Really nice and upward in the shoulders. Move around in whatever way feels good. And then moving into a cow. Good. What that's really going to do is start to mobilize around your rib cage, mobilize your spine in a really nice and gentle way that should, by the time you've, you've done it, feel really good. So feel free to do more there if you want to. That is totally fine. The next one that we are going to do can stay from a knee, uh, see, uh, kneeled position, sorry. And you're going to bring legs nice and wide here, okay? Feet can be stacked at the bottom. And we're going to bring our hands forward. And this is just a really great low back stretch. If you've done any kind of yoga, you'll recognize this one. Head comes down, reaching those fingertips forward, but also thinking about pulling our shoulders back and down. You should feel a nice stretch across your entire back. release there you're just going to bring up the hands you can come up to the knees stack the feet and then the next thing we're going to do we're actually going to come on up here so come up with whatever way feels the most comfortable for you 
should be feeling pretty mobile now in our upper body into our spine. We're gonna bring legs wide. Wider than shoulder width apart, and toes are gonna to come out as we do this. So they don't have to be super wide to the point that you lose your balance, but we do want them to be a little wide here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that your knees fall in line with your toes there. So if you find that your knees are really starting to collapse, then we're gonna narrow our stance a little bit with that. But for now, kind of find a sweet spot there, and your knees are gonna bend out and in line uh, with your feet. So all we're gonna do is put hands uh, palms on the knees, stretching out the groin and the upper body. You can choose to do um, palms in, palms out, whatever feels comfortable. I typically take a one-sided approach so I can feel it a little bit more in one side at a time. You can do whatever feels good here. Make sure you're breathing. If this ever feels uncomfortable, you can always stand up, shake it out a little bit. And then do the other side. The whole purpose of stretching is that it should be slightly uncomfortable, but it should not be painful. We should kind of meet ourselves at where our end is, try and let our bodies relax into that a little bit so we can get a little bit further and then move on. Good. And bring it up. Now from that same position, so toes would have been out, um, knees would have been facing out. We're actually going to pivot the toes now so they're straight. We're going to let ourselves come a little bit wider here. And all we're going to do, bending at the hips, we're going to reach forward. Okay? And you know, if this is really quite tight, this might be a good time to add a chair or something so you don't feel like you're going to tip over and you can kind of judge that intensity as you go. But the idea here is that legs stay straight and we're pivoting at the hips so that we can really feel that down the hamstring. So this is a good example of using a leg if you need it, keeping back nice and straight. If however you're a little bit more advanced or want a bit of a deeper stretch, you can reach down towards the ground. Okay, you can make sure legs are nice and wide here. Should feel like a good stretch, only go um, as far as you're able to. You're ready we're going to reach over to the one side should feel this a little bit more even into your lower back a bit and then switch to the other side When you're ready, you can either bend your legs or just slowly move up or crawl your legs in. Whatever feels good, being gentle on your back though, slight bend in the legs, and come up. Now after that, you can shake out your legs a little bit, move around, see how you're feeling so far. It's important to check in with this process, right? We're gonna come down to the ground and we are going to do a single-sided straddle stretch. So you're gonna come down to the ground, you're gonna tuck one leg in, and you're gonna lay, uh, keep one leg straight. Now, it, it could be um, easy to open up your hips here, but I want you to think about sucking in this leg here, making it nice and square as we do this stretch. Now, if right away this is already too tight or maybe you can't even straighten your leg, totally fine. But what I want you to do is find the spot that works the best for you. So keeping body nice and upright, core nice and tight, chest upright, shoulders back, try not to right away just slump over we're going to reach towards that straight leg and the more you flex this foot the more you're going to feel it in your calf so just be mindful of that and we do want some calf involved in that so try and find a sweet spot for that okay so right now you could be feeling this a lot in your leg or maybe your back now if you're comfortable if you can't go this far that's totally fine but if you are you can then start to relax as you get to the bottom of that movement with your back and reach a little bit forward. Regardless though, if you are here or here, just take your time and do what feels best for you.
bed. And we can slowly crawl our fingers back up here, take the knee in, and switch sides. So the one leg comes in, the one leg is out, trying to flex that foot, sucking in that, um, that leg so we're nice and square in the hips. Nice upright posture, leaning forward. Moment to breathe. Depending on where you're at, you can come a little bit lower. time there if you want it. But once you're done, you're going to crawl your legs back. Okay? You can come back to this position. And the next thing we are going to do is a straddle stretch. Or sorry, a butterfly stretch. We kind of just did a modified straddle stretch, if you were wondering what that was. Now we're going to move into a butterfly stretch. So a butterfly, we've got some wings, which are our legs. That's how it's easiest to remember. Feet come together. Depending on your flexibility, you might be further out. Totally fine. Find what works best for you in order to hopefully try and make some contact between both of your feet. The legs are going to come out. Typically a butter would, butterfly would flutter, but we want to stay nice and still here. Um, and you can choose. You can hold on to the ankles and push down with both elbows so that you kind of feel it across your groins on both sides. But if you don't necessarily have the mobility there, if you find you really arching in order to achieve that, you can do one side at a time. If your hips are quite tight here, this might be a little um, uncomfortable. So listen to your body. Don't push it too far. Just take this nice and slow. Good. And it's your side if you are doing the one side of the approach. slowly starting to relax a bit more. Okay. And then gently you're just going to bring those knees together. Okay, this should be feeling hopefully pretty good. You need to be gentle on your hips there, so just go slow. But we're going to scooch our bum over a little bit so that we can come straight onto our mat or whatever surface we're on. And we're going to bring both legs out at one time. So toes and feet are going to be fairly close together, ankles matching. Okay. If this is quite tight already, totally fine. What you can do is bend the knees a little bit and lean forward as you do so. Or you can take the straight legged approach where you mostly are just kind of standing upright and that might be enough stretch for everyone, uh, which is fine. Or you can choose, again, keeping that back nice and straight, nice and upright to lean a bit more forward. Okay, similar to our kind of modified straddle stretch from before, or single sided straddle stretch, the more you flex those feet, the more you are going to feel them in your calf, or more, the more stretch you're going to feel in your calf here, um, which is not a bad thing. And you can also take the approach here of doing one side at a time if you have that mobility. So by holding the foot a bit more, you again will feel it in your calf. If you choose to do that, you want to switch both sides. gently here, keeping the back nice and flat, trying for the stretch to come more from the posterior chain, so the, the calves, the hamstrings, maybe a little bit of the lower back, but it shouldn't be fatiguing your lower back, so if you find that you're experiencing pain here, you're just going to bring it up. Then you can sit upright, relax the legs a little bit, let them come out of that. The next stretch that we will do is going to be a hip flexor stretch, which for those who work at a desk job, this is going to be a great stretch because our hips get so tight when we sit for too long. So I'm going to show you two variations 
on my hip flexor stretch. This is where that pillow might be uh, beneficial for you. But what you're gonna do, is you're gonna put one leg, or one knee, sorry, on the pillow. And then as best you can, you're gonna bring up the other leg, okay? At this stage, we wanna be 90 with the back leg and a 90 degree with the knee with the front leg. So 290 degrees. We're gonna keep a nice upright posture here, and already you might be feeling this a little bit in your hip. Now what I want you to focus on, you might need to feel it out, but if you push your bum to the back wall, you should hopefully feel that your pelvis is tilting in a specific way. So if you push your bum out to the back wall without really changing anything, your back arches a bit, your bum is out, your pelvis is tilted. What I want you to do now is the opposite of that. So if your belly button feels like it's being pushed outward right now, I want you to think about drawing it. So scooping those bum cheeks underneath, core comes nice and tight, nice upright position, and right away, if you're, if you're effectively drawing in that pelvis, you should feel it across the front of the leg and into the front hip. This is what we call an active hip flexor stretch because they were actually having to activate some muscles in order to really feel it down that whole way. Okay, if you want a little bit more, you can bring up the leg, or bring up the arm, sorry, and you can reach slightly to the side. Breathe into this. Keep that bum scooped underneath so we're actively contracting our glutes. Good. And now we can take a passive approach with this hip flexor stretch by letting our legs come out a little bit further, our front leg come out a little bit further, and then reaching in. So now we're passively letting that range of motion go as far as we want. And again, you should feel this in your hip flexor. One thing you want to be mindful of as we do this stretch, and anytime we do this stretch, is that our knee is not extending over past our toe. So if you find that you're really reaching into that foot, take it up a notch, take it a little further, and lean into it. You can also relax that back foot if you want. Whatever feels the most comfortable for you. And then when you're ready, when that feels like it's been a good enough stretch, we're gonna come out, bring that leg straight, bring it back. Okay, let's flip and do the other side. So we're gonna come 90 and 90. Okay, that back foot, especially for the passive, is a little bit helpful to have on the toes. Okay, nice and square if you need to. Round out that spine, push that bum back so you can feel the opposite of what we're trying to achieve and tuck in that pelvis Right away, you should feel a fire in the quad and the hip flexor, and this might be enough stretch for you right now. You might be feeling it really effectively in the front of that leg. And if that's the case, you're just going to breathe and relax into it. Okay, the other option is we can lift up that hand, push slightly to the side, and we will feel it a little bit more. that more passive approach where we bring that foot out a little further and reach into our hips, relax that back foot, feel a little bit of a deeper range of motion here. And you're always welcome to you know, have a chair or something um, if this feels, feels too unstable. Bring yourself out and relax. Okay. Next one we are going to do, so we've really now loosened up those hips a bit, we've stretched them out, so this next one should feel kind of complementary to what we just did. You're going to sit on your bum, hands come back for support, legs are nice and wide, and you're going to let one hip, or both hips I should say, fall, fall at a time. So both knees come to the ground, right away you might feel this in one hip more than the other, but you should hopefully feel a little bit in both. Spend a couple of minutes here. Again, this is kind of a bit of more of a, a mobile one, so you're moving as you do this. You're gonna just gently do some windshield wipers for your hips or hip rocks. Good, and you can do these 
for as many times as you want. Really feel out that hip joint. This should feel pretty good. Come to that nice and relaxed. You got three more stretches? Three more stretches. So you're gonna pop up, you can come to four point kneeling, get up in whatever way feels the most comfortable to you. Um, and we're gonna take actually a ledge or something. So this could be a step, this could be a stair, a countertop, whatever you want. Make sure it's the right height for you. But you're gonna bring up one leg to that ledge. So if this was too high, maybe a couch seat or a chair um, would be a good one. We're gonna think about keeping that standing knee slightly bent, nice upright position, reaching forward, okay? Again, we should be feeling this in the hamstring the most. And there's no, we don't need to be ambitious enough to reach for the, the chair, not unless we want to, but really just focusing on a nice strong back, core tight, bending through that hip. Good. So a nice release there. Stand on up. I you feel comfortable. You may need a wall or something to hold on to. You're gonna switch sides. Nice upright posture. Standing knee has a nice soft bend. Bending cover the front of the legs. You can use a wall if need be. Again, that standing knee is going to be nice, soft, uh, nice, have a nice, soft bend. Wow, words. And we are going to kick up our back leg, get it nice and close to our bum. Nice, strong core here. We're not reaching out. We're just trying to stay nice and neutral in our tube, stretching through the front of the core. moment I want you to ask yourself how do I feel right now close your eyes feel out your body feel how it feels to move I hope it feels better it should and if it still isn't hundred percent I encourage you to keep with this keep doing it because it will get better you will experience improvement but it takes time and you are worth the investment you are worth the time and energy to feel your best right so I hope today was beneficial for you I hope you enjoyed it um, I encourage you to do this as much as you can um, and to be exploratory as to what your body feels at what point and in what movements and to just find grace in that. Meet yourself where you're at 
and be consistent with it. And it'll be amazing what you can accomplish. So thanks so much, guys, for watching.